Jenny Wiley, one of the most famous pioneer heroines in early American history. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and we're gonna take you on a journey of our descendants gathering, the descendants of Jenny Wiley herself. I'm one of them myself. Jenny is my seventh great grandmother. She's also one of my great aunts, as you'll find very popular in Appalachian culture. We're gonna be taking you to various stops that are relevant to Jenny. We're gonna hear speeches about Jenny. We're gonna hear different types of seminars and things that are relevant to the time period when our pioneer ancestor was captured. If you don't know who Jenny Wiley is, in a nutshell, a band of Native Americans kicked in her cabin door, killed a few of her children immediately and her younger brother, took her captive with her baby on her hip. They took her from modern day Bland County, Virginia and brought her a couple of hundred miles into Eastern Kentucky outside of modern day Paintsville, Kentucky. Jenny was held in captivity for approximately 11 months, during which time they killed the baby that she had during her captivity and the baby that she gave birth to while in captivity. She heroically escaped and got away from her captives and was lucky to reunite with her husband, Thomas Wiley, who was also a Revolutionary War veteran. You're gonna hear a lot more about our famous ancestors. There's way more to the story, so we invite you to learn more during this program. So, let's get started. We missed you very much at the park. We love this event. This event means the world to us. Uh, with Jenny Wiley being our namesake, uh, I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of y'all taking time out to uh, be with us and uh, to come and uh, celebrate uh, these lives and times and trials and triumphs of everything. There's nothing I can tell you all about the story or anything that you don't already know. And I am very excited to learn from you all this weekend. A horse approaching. Who's pounding their way fast up to my front door? John Borders gasping for air like the old hound does in the hot sun. I heard him, they think he's coming. His horse seems like he's trying to catch his breath, saying this man riding. It was like night owls calling out to each other, only with daylight. Lucky I escaped with my life. My brother Dad dropped in the ground. The sound of his footsteps moving quickly through the tall grass over to us. Take the children and run. Even after he's gone, I can still hear John Borders breathing heavy from fear. But the sound that pounds in my ears the loudest of them all is the baby I've got growing inside me. He's kicking up a storm like he knows danger's on his way. But the sun sets in the time it takes for me to get my children ready to stay with their relations away down that riverbank. That sky was on fire when I heard a sound it still echoes in my mind the very instant I tried to drift off to sleep each night. The door to the cabin flies open. The blood red sky blazes behind those red-skinned savages. That's when I first see them. The others and men. Everything was quiet. I knew that the screaming something at me and and, and whooping the war cries. I, I knew that my children were screaming out. I knew that my 15-year-old brother back called out for mercy before they slid his throat, took his scalp clean off his head, but I <coughs> hear nothing. The blood rushed to my ears as fast and frightened as the river does when the eyes and helped keeping the baby inside and he stopped kicking. So quiet. I wonder who held the knife to my throat. My children they were made to stand on one side of the room. I knew they were asking me questions. The pounding of my soul had calmed down some, and I could hear the way that they were speaking and meant that they were looking for something. The truth, I reckon. Maybe they were looking for someone who had done them wrong, but I didn't know what they were looking for. I couldn't understand who they were looking for, and when I couldn't answer the one in charge. It took a tomahawk to my oldest son. Their brother's scalp get torn, cleaned off his head. 
according to the last things each of them saw. The others asked me again, and again I couldn't answer, so again they took one of my children from me. And then a third. But when they tried to take little baby Tommy, I would not let them. I, I tried to fight. I tried to grab my baby and just hold him close to me so that we could die together, but, but they grabbed me hard and tied my arms behind my back. And so me and my little baby Tommy and the baby I had growing inside me, he became a prisoner. Was himself killed because they could not carry the body away but had to bury his body. They buried his body in the roadway and then filled the dirt in over his grave. And then the army marched over the grave so the Indians could not determine the location of his body, take it out and desecrate it. There was a reason for that. So here we are behind the church of Mud Lick Church. And down this lane right here is the rock cliff. Now we're not able to take you to the rock cliff where Grandma Jenny was held in captivity. It's on private land and things, so we can't take you there right now. Someday we're hoping to be able to bring you there. But this is so very, very close to where our pioneer heroine ancestor lived and was kept in captivity by the Native Americans. So here we are at the graveside of our grandmother, Jenny Wiley. And today the descendants made the pilgrimage and the trek up to her graveside to show their respects. It was emotional for many of us uh, to actually be here. Many of us feel like it's spiritual. I use that word a lot when we talk about genealogy. But this one particular ancestor, our own Jenny Wiley, if not for her resiliency and her efforts to escape and rejoin her husband, none of us would be here and we truly honor and respect her for that.
So you see the weather behind us. We were actually supposed to be at the shelter house throwing some tomahawks, hanging out, maybe a little picking and grinning, but instead we're stuck here back at the convention center. So because of the rain, we're going to uh, do some quick interviews with some descendants and some cousins. Hi, my name is Angela Wiley. I came all the way from North Carolina and Jenny is my sixth great grandmother. I uh, dragged line straight down through the gentleman and was super excited to come and meet some new family members, uh, make some new connections, get some more information on the history, and just kind of hang out and say, hey, I had a five hour drive to come on up here. I really like looking into genealogy and seeing who we are. And with her being my sixth great grandmother, I think there's a lot that we can learn from her. She was a very, very strong woman and just wanted to be able to learn a little more about her story and connect up with other folks that are also related to me. Because um, it's important to know your past, know your ancestors, know who you come from. I think the things that really stick with me about Jenny is how resilient she was. Um, to see her children get murdered like that, to endure captivity, then escape and come back and raise five more, um, that's a really strong woman. And I like to think that I maybe inherited a little bit of her strength and I've got a little bit of that that I can connect up with. And uh, I found out that I was a direct relation probably about five or six years ago. Um, my family had kind of branched off a little bit and we didn't really know. And I had to get into doing some digging and I uh, discovered we were related and kin. It's just been fun coming up here and getting a chance to see all the things and learn a little more about her. So now I'm with one of my, uh, I guess one of my little cousins kind of thing. And uh, you're a Jenny Wiley descendant, aren't you? Yes, I am. And what's your name? Lucy Snatchko. And uh, where are you from, Lucy? I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How long did it take you to get here? Uh, it was a six hour drive. Six so. hours to come down here. Yeah. So it must have been pretty important to come and visit this. It was one. very important. Well, well, well why, why is it important then? Well, Jenny Wiley is one of my ancestors and she was a very strong woman. She witnessed her children being uh, slayed, you know, and she escaped from the, ca uh, she escaped being captive from the Native Americans. Sure. So I think it's really important to honor her. Yeah, most definitely, because you know, without her, we wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. So, and how old are you? I am 11 years old. 11 years old. Are you a history fan? Yeah, I, I would say I'm a history fan. You get straight A's in history and class or school? Yeah. And, you know, kind of thing. Like, I guess so, because a lot of the young folks, they don't care about history, you know, so it's really a big deal, I think, that uh, you've decided to, to come down here. Who'd you come down here with? I came here with my parents, my aunt, my grandma, and my sister. Oh, wow, so a whole group of, of people came down. All girls, huh? All girls. Girls trip, right? You know, so, but uh, so if what what is the thing that's most amazing to you about Jenny Wiley? I think the thing that is most amazing is that she was able to escape and actually find her way home. Yeah, all the way home. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And it's definitely a story that we don't hear about uh, as much anymore these days. So uh, folks like us want to keep it alive. Yeah, you know, we, um, we didn't really even know she existed. Oh, wow. How did you find out about her? Um, my parents got stranded after a flood in a hotel. So uh, they were they couldn't go anywhere. So they decided to look into their family history. And we found out that we were related to Jenny Wiley. She, she is my, I think, my six times great grandmother. Yeah, that's amazing. I think some people here are like fourth grades. And I'm actually a seventh grade, depending on how the generation goes. But that's a neat story. Was that recently that they discovered that? I think that was about two or three years ago. Wow, that's yeah, that's pretty recently. So that's a new discovery and decided to come down here to the Descendants reunion. So Yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Well, thanks for being here. I'm glad glad that you came to enjoy it. Love to see the younger generations coming out yeah, and uh, learn about no our problem. ancestors. I hope you have a safe trip back to Pittsburgh. Thank you. All right. Hi, my name is Deborah Goins, and I'm from Rockwood, Tennessee. It's about a five hour drive from here. Jenny, she is my fifth great grandmother through um, the Williamson. This is my third year coming. We didn't get to come last year because of COVID, but uh, this is our third year. I think it's very important. Family and history is uh, important to me, and I want to be able to pass it on to my children and my grandchildren. And um, uh, I just I love the idea that we're, we're able to everybody come here and meet and uh, meet our cousins and 
get together and find out how we're all related. And then the story of Jenny being able to uh, go out where she came from and uh, what, you know, what happened to her and everything, it, it's, really, it's really an interesting story. I found out, I didn't find out until uh, uh, my 20s. My grandmother had talked about it, but when I was younger, wasn't really interested in it. And um, then when I got older, uh, we were sitting down talking about genealogy and uh, she had mentioned it. And then I had looked it up and right then it was like I was hooked. The thing that I admire most about Jenny is uh, her strength. Everything that she endured, having her children killed, uh, and then, you know, being held captive and being able to escape. Uh, I know I don't think that I could do it. Um, you would just want to just lay down and get, give up, and uh, she didn't. She has a lot of strengths. And uh, matter of fact, my granddaughter turned 18 um, this last year, and for her birthday, I gave her one of the Jimmy Wiley books and uh, told her that she came from a line of strong women. So it means a lot to me. My name's Mary Sword. I'm the fourth great-granddaughter of Jenny and Tom Wiley. And I'm from uh, Genoa, West Virginia. That's the middle of Wayne County in the southwestern part of West Virginia. It takes about an hour and 40 minutes for me to get here. This is my third year since we started it. I've been here every year. We had to not do it last year for COVID reasons. I've always known that Jenny was, was my ancestor. My grandmother, who lived to be 102 years old, always told us the story. She was born in 1899 and lived till 2001. So she lived in three centuries. And she always told the story. And she told the story that Jane was part Indian. So whatever, <laughs> you be the judge. <laughs> in our region, everybody does know the story of Jenny Wiley, but there are several different branches of the tree where one person knows one part of the story, one person knows another part. They get embellished. Of course, I choose to believe what my grandmother said. <laughs> so she was told by her grandfather that story about that Jane was part Indian. Her grandmother was the actual descendant. My grandmother's grandmother was the actual descendant. But her mother, which would have been Jenny's daughter, and, and then the granddaughter, would not talk about it. Uh, they were embarrassed, uh, but uh, my grandmother's grandfather took her off to the side and said, your grandmother will never tell you this story, um, but Jane was the product of the Indian capture, so I, I choose to believe her, but you know, I know that there's other stories and I know that it could, it's not necessarily true. My favorite thing about Jenny is her perseverance, her strength. I can't imagine seeing your children and your brother tomahawked right in front of you while they see each other being tomahawked. To see your children go through that and then to be drug off through the forest, which it's not like we see nowadays. But I don't see how they could even walk through the forest. I know there were trails, but still. Um, and she was pregnant and then also had her, her little baby with her. And then to see them uh, take that baby and bash his brains out against that beech tree. I cannot imagine what she went through. And she had to be so strong to be able to live through all that and inexplicably find her way back to Harmon Station. I can't imagine how that happened other than she said she had it in a dream and the only thing I know is God must have guided her. I do uh, draw strength through Jenny. I know we have the same blood. Uh, I'm not nearly, not even close to being as strong as she is, but I went through something a few years ago that required strength, and I do, I do relate that back to her, that I was able to get through that. I had a home invasion, and a lady grabbed my grandchildren, and I had to fight, fight her off by myself. And so I attribute being able to do that to Jenny. Today at a ceremony, I spoke about our grandfather, Tom Wiley, Jenny's husband. And uh, he was a patriot who fought in the Revolutionary War. He was also at the Battle of Point Pleasant. And we're not exactly sure everything he you know, did, but we know he was a patriot. And so we honored him today. I feel like maybe part of his story gets pushed off to the side because of Jenny's side of the story. But to just imagine 
he had gone to take get ginseng to trade for things that they would need for the winter. And just to imagine coming home and finding out that all your children, and your brother-in-law had been murdered and your cabin burnt down and your wife and baby taken off, uh, captured. I, I just can't imagine what he must have felt. I just wonder if he felt guilty maybe, even though he really should not have because he had to do the bartering and the trading to take care of his family. But it's just human nature to think that. So I think, I think Tom was just as strong as Jenny. He did not have to take her back afterwards after she was uh, escaped. Because in those days, the women were looked down upon who were captured by the Indians and their husbands didn't have to take them back. So I, he must have really, really loved Jenny. I feel like those of you who have not come to one of these uh, you're really missing out. It's very important to remember history, whether it's our own ancestors or just history in general. But it's so much more, it comes to your heart so much closer if it's your own family. And I just, I just wish that those of you who have never come will come to, to subsequent ones and live this history and find out what she went through, what your blood went through. Like I say, remember Tom whenever you're thinking of Jenny. My name is Jack Green. I am from the uh, first daughter of Jenny Wiley. After she came back from captivity, her name was Jane. My wife and I are from West Virginia, from Charleston, West Virginia. For the last three years, uh, discounting last year for COVID, uh, we actually have been involved in this uh, uh, reinstitution of uh, our reunion uh, four years now. And my wife is actually the one <laughs> doing most of the work. Uh, and I sincerely thank her for picking up the, the mantle and going with it. Jenny Wiley is important to me. I don't know if I'm uh, uh, normal for the Wiley clan, for the uh, ancestry, but uh, being that, say, saying that Jenny Wiley is important to me, it's just been a, an everyday thing for me through my childhood. Uh, I knew of Jenny Wiley. So given the opportunity to uh, restart something that had uh, begun here, I guess back in the 50s, 60s, uh, we are interested in getting this going again. Uh, so this being about the fourth, fifth year that we have uh, done this, and uh, I certainly invite everybody uh, who is a, a member of the Wiley clan to uh, please uh, get involved. Descendants of Jenny Wiley on Facebook, catch up with us, uh, find out what we're doing, uh, and join in. And I sincerely request somebody else to uh, pick up the mantle and, and go with the, uh, the, the organizing and running of uh, this yearly event. The strength that she had within her, uh, we, we certainly have today, in today's world, uh, uh, 20, uh, 2021 uh, women of today, I'm sorry ladies, couldn't match up to those of the 1780s uh, with Jenny Wiley. Jenny Wiley uh, having uh, been sequestered by the Indians, uh, kept in uh, captivity for about 11 months, and then escaping and getting back home and going through the things that uh, she went through, I doubt that uh, there are many men, uh, even the, the really he men and certainly the the women of today we today as a, a generation just could not i don't believe do what jenny wiley did we see uh, in our society today the degradation of history uh, changing of history uh, not saying that everything that you read about jenny wiley and uh, the uh, things that she went through uh, are truth we don't know uh, a lot of it is uh, guesswork, 
Uh, a lot of it is uh, told down through uh, the, the times since 1880s uh, through generations, uh, so history is passed on that way. But today, history is uh, not very important to us, and at least as, uh, as a society. And I believe history is extremely important to us. Those who, uh, what is the saying, uh, those who uh, do not remember history are, uh, I think the word is damned to uh, repeat it. So uh, being able to, to know what history is all about, that's why it's important. My name is Joanne Jones Green, and I'm married to Jack Green and he is the descendant of Jenny Wiley. We've been married five years now. Uh, I found out that he was related to Jenny Wiley. It was his great-great-grandmother. So I love history, and I said, oh, do they have a reunion? And he says, well, I don't know. So I started on Facebook trying to find, you know, Jenny Wiley reunion. And, and it had stopped several years ago with the Jenny Wiley Association. So I uh, got with Mary, Mary Perry Sword, and she is the one that has the Facebook site, and we concocted to have a family reunion for the Wileys. 2018 was the first reunion. We'd started the year before trying to get something together. So I think, yeah, it was 2017. And then we, in 18, we had the first reunion, and then we had another one in 19. Uh, 20, we did not have one because of COVID, and then this year we had one. We had a lot of people here at this one. We had 30 people, which is more than we've had any other reunion. So that was a blessing. Uh, we did a lot more this time. Uh, it was really good to have the DAR and the SAR involved with the um, memorial service to Tom Wiley. Uh, he was in the Revolutionary War, so made sense to have something for him. Um, Jenny's always being honored, so it was nice to, to honor Tom Wiley. Uh, but like I said, I have a love for history and my own family, and I have did all my uh, family tree. And so then I started on Jack's and found out about the Wileys and who all he was, which one he came from. He comes from Mary Jane, which was the first one that married uh, Richard Williamson. And so that's his line. So I had to find out all of his line and all of his things. And then I think he's got a, also got a Mayflower uh, ancestor. I'm working on that, but I still haven't found exactly how that fits in. It's a Dodie's D-O-T-Y. So myself, on my history, I don't, can't find any of this good stuff. I've got one man that was hung. One of my, one of my first cousins three times removed was hung in Jackson County. That's my, that's my kind of history, I guess. <laughs> a lot of farmers are back there too, but. Still yet, I'm, I'm in the DAR, and I went in the DAR through Charles Parsons, which was my grandmother's uh, maiden name, the Parsons family, which he was well known in Jackson County. So, and I went in, and it's a fine organization, DAR is, so I recommend it to anybody. So, and I'm trying to get uh, Jack to join the SAR, but he still resistant about doing anything like that. So, maybe one of these days I'll get him in the Sons of American Revolution. I've been interested in Jenny Wiley since in the 60s. We came down here, I came down here to my family camp, and I love this campground, this area of Kentucky. Uh, we're, we live in West Virginia, uh, and I camped all over West Virginia and uh, Kentucky too. And so I was just taken by her story. So I had read up on her, and I knew about her story from a long time ago. And also of the one that uh, th came through West Virginia was uh, Mary Ingalls. I've also read a lot about her. So I've had an interest in all this history and it's just a, uh, it's a story about uh, this woman that was so brave, especially when all of her, her children were, were, were killed in front of her. I cannot imagine anybody having to go through something like that. But she is a fine, fine woman that, uh, and uh, all these people that descend from her are certainly, uh, you know, got a good heritage there, a good, you know, of uh, what she was and what she did. And we have no idea what she went through, you know, with the time she was with the Indians. We don't, we really don't know all that history of what happened to her. So I just admire her very much that what she went through for, and she survived. That's, that's the main thing, she survived. To honor her, uh, to re not forget her, you know, 
That's, that's the problem with so much history now, it is forgotten. And I think that we need to have the young people know about her history and the history of our ancestors, uh, that what they went through to get us where we are now. Uh, a lot of the younger people don't appreciate uh, what our ancestors did for us back then, and even my grandparents, what they went through. And my mother, my mother was born in a log cabin. Uh, so, and she was the next to youngest out of 11 with uh, five half siblings already before her. So she had a kind of a rough life too, but you know, and she taught me a lot about being a strong woman. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with being a strong woman. I just hope we continue uh, having these reunions. I would like for somebody else to take it over and, and start with, you know, doing the things and actually having people to come in and do the different things. We want to expand and have so many different things that, that we've got the ideas, but it's just getting it to work. So we want this reunion to keep continuing on. We need new people to come in. We need the young people to come in. So hopefully we can get that to happen and we can continue with this reunion for Jenny Wiley and Tom Wiley uh, descendants. I want to tell you that uh, some of the highlights of my career, one of them was uh, surveying at Broke Lake Falls. The crew that I was with uh, went to Broke Lake Falls and surveyed the boundary because the highway department, well, not really, it was the government. You know, when they needed something done, they went over to the highway. We'll go over and get them boys to do it and we uh, did the survey. And the reason I'm telling you about this is uh, we used a shotgun as a survey uh, piece of equipment. And the reason we did, uh, like Jenny's cave, if you want to call it that, these, these vertical cliffs, and it's hard to survey across those. So what we did at Broke Lake Falls was we shot the shot, shot, shot the gun, and then I shot the stadia where we got rid of the leaves. It worked. Uh, the the, high, the uh, government had a place there. I think they since it now is a county property. Uh, but the reason I think y'all might want to see it is. <sighs> There are similarities to what I think y'all might want to do one of these days at the Jenny Wiley Cave. Uh, it already somewhat exists over here. It's in Menifee County, just outside of Morgan County on Highway 460. Uh, this is a Kentucky road map in case somebody needs one. I've intended to talk about uh, two Virginians. One of them is Philip Trammell. The other one is George Washington. The other guy I was going to talk to you a bit, little bit about is Daniel Boone. George got called the father of our country. They told me that when I went to school. Maybe he is. Daniel Boone, he, uh, he supposedly got us the West. Uh, he was the single-handed, uh, took care of everything, and we got uh, Kentucky and everything got fine. Uh, at least some people say that. Part of the reason I'm doing this is two of them were born the same year. Daniel was born two years after. And uh, they were involved in our country, all three of them were substantially. In 17 and 55, Daniel Boone and George Washington both were at Braddock's defeat over around Fort Pitt. Uh, they probably didn't pal around very much, but they both were there. I don't know if Philip was there. Uh, I don't have as much information on Philip as I do on the other two about five years before Jenny gets born uh, that this is happening.
Uh, what I was going to talk to you a little bit about is uh, the Scots Irish, okay? And the reason we're here, uh, are, do, do you guys know a lot about Scots Irish? Is that something that you're pretty familiar with? Some heads bobbing yes and no. Um, if you're in this room, you're definitely Scots Irish. You probably got a little German, a little English, English, some Scots. What what are the Scots Irish? Are they English? Are they Scottish? Are they Irish? Are they British? Are they what what is a Scots Irish? And it is Scots Irish, not Scots. Scots you drink. Scots, S O S S C O T S. Well, the Scots Irish, the reason why it's important, number one, is it's who we are as a people here in Appalachia. But it also, the, the more, when I, and, and this is going to be very brief, but the more I talk about the Scots-Irish, they molded America. America has taken on the personality of the Scots-Irish. The Scots-Irish, when you go back to the early 1600s, the people that lived on the borders of Scotland and England, Constantly battles. If you know anything about history back then at all, non-stop for hundreds of years, invasions back and forth. So they are English, they are Scottish, but they become a warrior culture, a fighting culture. They didn't really take stock in the houses that they lived in because they were constantly getting invaded. You know, they were constantly fighting. Many of them were, were poor. They didn't become land. They, they were constantly pawns in battles of people that had more, more money, wealth, and influence. So the King of England was tired of having to fool with Ireland, constantly battling Ireland. He says, why don't we kill two birds with one stone and take a bunch of these poor, poor Stephen rednecks and put them over there in Ireland. Let's breed, breed them out. Let's move them over there. They don't have anything there. Let's give them a little bit of land. Problem is, is those Scots were Presbyterian. The Irish were Catholic. So they bring them over there to the Ulster plantation. And all they do is fight the Irish, you know, and love the Irish. They marry the Irish. They create really a new group of people. Are they Scottish? Yes. Are they Irish? Yes. Well, after about one to four generations, they start to get recruited again. They're more of their pawns used again to protect the English. There's some studies that say that in the Revolutionary War, over 70% of the people, of the soldiers that fought were the Scots-Irish. Some people call it that Presbyterian War because it was our Scots-Irish ancestors. Now, going back to when they was in Scotland, we think of Scotland, we think of bagpipes, kilts, clans, okay? These people are clannish people. They don't care about a king. They don't even care about a governor or really anybody that's anywhere except who's right around them. You know, you guys right here are my clan. I care about my clan and I could care less what goes on over there. So our loyalty is to local. I could go on for all night about the Scots Irish and the impact that they've had on America. But I just wanted to touch base on a few of those things that we are America. We we are we are our culture here in Appalachia of and our ancestors are the ones that created the whole American spirit. Um where you can be whatever you want to be. So, and I'm daggone proud of that, so. We're pleased that you all did stay. We're gonna do this again next year. You know, COVID kept us away last year. We've all been vaccinated, so hopefully, you know, we'll be back next year bigger and better. Uh, I'm stepping away. I hope other people are going to step up. Mary is going to help too. I'm going to help, but I'm not going to be planning everything. We want somebody local. <laughs> I'm not local. I'm too angry. <laughs> we want somebody local. I guess because you live in Kentucky, she can drink. It's a big place. <laughs> 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 and Mary is very well you know, acquainted with many people uh, 
uh, that can get some people in here to talk and do things like we've had, we've been having. Not that we didn't have wonderful speakers this time, but we need to get more. And we want to increase what we're doing, you know. And I'm just glad that I married into this family. <laughs> 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 and I'm glad I found some new cousins over here. <laughs> yeah. uh, about 60, 50 cousins or something like that. But we're kind of we so that's a good thing. We appreciate y'all staying, and uh, it's fun. I, I get excited, um, I really do. I'm tired, uh, it's been a long day, and, uh, but we get fun, didn't we have fun? Oh, yeah. And I thought the DAR, I mean the DAR, SAR thing this morning at Jenny's grave, which is fantastic. Yes, and I'm so glad that we had, uh, it was more than I expected, really, and it was just wonderful that they included DAR and everything and it was just a wonderful presentation so hopefully next year we can talk back and we'll have to work on them. yeah and if you guys have any ideas please we you know you put some of you at the meeting last night please. but like throughout the year if you yes. come up with something put it on the facebook page yes. can we do this right can we do that we're trying to get into soap making and quilting and uh, trinity was talking about a lot of stuff today that he'd like to get started he, he wants to get a, an indian camp and cattle and uh, you know, like a pioneer encampment and have that set up, and he named up all kinds of stuff. Like, like over the golf course. Yeah. Do they talk about doing the Wiley show again? Well, they the said way. that the lady, uh, Shannon, the lady that was here uh, last night, that she and her husband are writing a play. Is that what somebody said? Yeah, somebody. So, because there is a problem with the play. Jenny Wiley, uh, some something there was uh, they couldn't put it on anymore. There was a between the owner and the whoever owned the rights to the play. Some way there was a friction there, and so they're trying to write a new story. It'll be the same story. It'll be in a new different way. And written by a new person. New person. So, be right. So that way they can perform it. So hopefully that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? The habit of the week of our reunion. And it will be the same weekend, the weekend after the 4th of July. So make it work out really well. Um, all the kids are out of school, so just mark it on your calendar. Yeah. And since I am Scots Irish, I do play the bagpipes. You do? If you'd like to hear them, I'll have them with me. Right there next year. <laughs> <laughs> We want to thank you for joining our Jenny Wiley Descendants Reunion. We'd like to invite you to join us next year. You don't even necessarily have to be a descendant of Jenny Wiley to come and join us to learn how to celebrate her history and honor her name. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.